I'm Lauren Wood, and I'm in your corner, the composer's corner. It's right here, right there, in this little corner right there. That's where you will be composing. When I was growing up, they actually taught music in public school. I knew the meanings of melody and counterpart by eighth grade. But in today's world, learning music is a luxury reserved for very few. With the exceptions of Juilliard, Berkeley, and a number of other music programs found in universities, the opportunities to learn about the craft of music creation are rare. Hence, The Composer's Corner, a place where we interview music creators, dissect songs, explore new gadgets and techniques, and give you a window into the world of music creation. Welcome to The Composer's Corner. song can be determined by how many other artists have covered it, then the song Fallen meets that criteria. Performed all around the world in many different languages, Fallen, which originally was passed over by Warner Brothers because it didn't have a chorus, has risen to the top of the charts and has been heard in films, TV and other artist recordings. The author of Fallen, Lauren Wood, has herself been seen and heard in a variety of ways throughout her extensive history as a singer-songwriter. And today's episode of The Composer's Corner focuses on Lauren's insights and experiences in the music industry. Hi, I'm Jeannie Cunningham, and welcome to another episode of The Composer's Corner. Last week's episode gave us a window into Lauren Wood's extensive history in the music industry through our video vignette known as Melody Lane. And we also touched briefly upon some of her more recent activities, but this week is a continuation of that interview that we had with Lauren Wood, and it's a wonderful interview. We cover a lot of bases in this episode, so be sure to stick around for the Composer's Corner, Lauren Wood, Part 2. And we remember the lyrics. <laughs> but, wait, if somebody were to listen to your lyrics, they would think that you spend all your time wallowing in love. If somebody would just see your stage or pers persona, they would think you're too wacky to ever be romantic, you know? Is that, do you think, a left-right-side marriage thing that's working for you? Or it, I think I've always had that thing. I've always, like, written music that was either, like, funny, like, Chunky Novi and Ernie was a lot of, like, really funny, wacky mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, on the other hand, I always have written romantic songs, too. And I still do it now. I mean, How much of your songs that you've written are true stories. What um, percentage? 80, 90, 100? 95 maybe, 95. And occasionally I'll write something that my co-writer is going through. Uh-huh. <laughs> I never watched my co-writer breaking up with his girlfriend once and I like wrote a song about that. He was actually upset at first and he he felt like it was sort of an intrusion of his privacy. And he used to well, call me off on the phone and he goes like, okay Lauren, now I'm eating, I'm at a restaurant eating sushi. Do you want to write about that? <laughs> but then he got over it and he really liked it. Do you call people up to write, co-write with them or do they call you usually? I, my favorite co-writers have been actually close friends, so we're mm -hmm. talking anyways. Yeah. And, and then yeah. if something comes up, and like you that, yeah. they'll say, I'm working on something, do they, do they want you to finish no, it? No, usually we're working on another song. Mm -hmm. We're producing another song that we wrote before, by accident. Mm -hmm. They'll be noodling on something. I often write with guitar players, because I already have the keyboard thing. So. <laughs> 